Hi everyone, Rocco and I are back for another read aloud and math problem of the day. And something that I think we really need to review and go over and discuss because it's so important are the four main parts of speech, which are noun, verb, adjective, and adverb. And we talked about these a lot in school and in class and while we're reading we kind of mark up sentences and we identify what the nouns and the verbs are. Um, but it's really, really important to keep that fresh in our minds, even though we're not in the classroom. So just a reminder, a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. If you can see it, it's a noun. Um, if it's something that you can talk about, it's a noun. So it's anything, um, like a marker, I gave an example of a book, your brain, a dog, uh, his phone, anything. A verb is an action word, so it's something that you can do. So I just threw his bone. So throw, eat, read, smell, taste, jump, skip, hop, anything like that is a verb, anything that you do. An adjective, it describes a noun. So when you have something, what does it look like? What does it sound like? Is it um, what does it feel like? Anything that you would use to describe what kind of thing that is. So I put slimy here. So if we're talking about a noun, which is a worm, an adjective I could use to describe it is slimy. What kind of worm is it? Slimy. And finally, we have adverbs. These are the most difficult, I think, to find, and they're kind of tricky. Um, because they describe how you do something. They describe the verb. So if you're eating, how are you eating? Are you eating quickly? Are you eating silently? Are you eating slowly? Are you eating loudly? It's how you do something. And almost always an adverb will end in L-Y, so silently. That's not always the case, um, but that's just kind of a good rule of thumb if you're ever uh, confused about what an adverb is. They almost always end in L-Y. So what we're going to do is, uh, you all know how much I love Spongebob, so I found a Spongebob kind of chapter book. Um, there are eight chapters in the book. It, they're very short, but I'm only going to read half of the book today. I'll read chapters one through four today, and then I'll read the other four chapters on Monday. And as I'm reading, I'm going to point out some really important nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs that I identify as being the most important on the page. If you're listening to me reading and you hear me say something like, oh, that's a noun, oh, that's a verb, you can leave it in the comments if you'd like, or um, you can respond to me on Flipgrid, or next time we have a Zoom meeting, you can share whatever uh, parts of speech that you found. I'm just going to point out the most important ones, in my opinion. So this is a Spongebob Movie Pants, uh, scene one, take one. It's a very silly book about Spongebob and Patrick wanting to make their own movie. So like I said, as I'm reading, listen out for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Chapter one, birth of a notion. One day, Spongebob Squarepants and his best friend, Patrick Starr, were walking home from the movies. That was the best movie ever, Spongebob said. I laughed, I cried. So on that page, there are lots of parts of speech that I, that I identified right away. Um, first, I'll start with the nouns. So we're talking about Spongebob Squarepants. He himself is a noun. And he's talking about his best friend. Patrick Starr. Now, a friend is a person, so those are two nouns that I'm going to add to my chart. Um, and as we're talking about SpongeBob's friend Patrick, it says that he is his best friend. So we're describing what kind of friend he is. He's not the worst friend, he's not a silly friend, he's the best friend. So if friend is our noun, then the adjective that describes what kind of friend he is, is best. Okay. 
that was the best movie ever, SpongeBob said. I laughed, I cried. So we can see or we hear two different things that SpongeBob did. He laughed and he cried. So two verbs that I read are laugh and cry. I cried too, Patrick admitted. Only after you spilled your popcorn, Spongebob pointed out. That was so sad, Patrick sobbed, blowing his nose. Spongebob wondered how he could make people laugh and cry. Patrick thought for a moment. You could tickle folks and then rub them with sandpaper, he suggested helpfully. So now I'm hearing Patrick is suggesting an idea. It's kind of a silly idea, but he's suggesting an idea that you could tickle someone to make them laugh and then rub them with sandpaper to make them cry. That's not exactly what SpongeBob was talking about, but he suggested something, so that's what he's doing. He suggested it. To suggest kind of means to give your idea about something. And then it says that he suggested it helpfully. So that's how he suggested it. He wasn't suggesting it in a mean way or in a way to um, kind of make fun of him. He was trying to be helpful about it. So, oh. all right. Or I can make a movie, SpongeBob declared, about tickling people with sandpaper, Patrick added. Chapter 2. There's no business like show business. Spongebob quickly ran to the local fast food restaurant, the Krusty Krab. He wanted to tell his boss, Mr. Krabs, about his idea to make a movie. What kind of movie? asked Mr. Krabs. So I hear another verb. It says Spongebob ran to the local fast food restaurant. So he was running. And it described how he ran. It said he ran quickly. So quickly is going to be our adverb. <clears throat> now, it's talking about Mr. Krabs, and Mr. Krabs is SpongeBob's boss. And he has an idea about making a movie. So those are two nouns that I can use as examples from this book. He has a boss, and he has an idea. A movie. a movie about you, Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob replied excitedly. It's called The Crab Father. Mr. Krabs shook his head. I'm a simple patty man, SpongeBob, not a movie star, he explained. SpongeBob tried to convince Mr. Krabs to change his mind. But think of the fans, SpongeBob began. Think of the fame. Mr. Krabs started to lean forward in his chair. SpongeBob continued, think of the fortune. Okay, so uh, Mr. Krabs is talking about himself. He says, ah, I'm not really a movie star. I'm just a simple patty man. So that's describing Mr. Krabs. It's describing a noun. So he's very simple. Um, and it says that uh, Spongebob was replying excitedly. So he was talking to Mr. Krabs in an exciting way. It describes how he was talking to Mr. Krabs. So that's another adverb. Excitedly. All right, I think we get the idea for these parts of speech. So I'm just going to read the rest of this half of the book and as I'm reading I want you to point out nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs that you hear. Maybe leave them in the comments or save them for when we have this discussion on Zoom. All right. Suddenly Mr. Krabs jumped onto his desk. Now you're talking my language, SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs said, shaking SpongeBob's hand. When do we start? Chapter 3, Quiet on the Set. SpongeBob gathered the rest of his cast and crew together. Then he decided it was time to rehearse the first scene. But Mr. Krabs was growing impatient. Let's get started, SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs said. Money's 
I mean, time's a-wasting. Suddenly, strange music filled the kitchen. Cut! SpongeBob called. What are you doing, Squidward? There's nothing like good music to add some class to a movie, replied Squidward Tentacles, SpongeBob's neighbor. And that, Mr. Squidward, was nothing like good music, Mr. Krabs teased. Everyone laughed as Squidward stormed off with his clarinet. Chapter 4. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Squarepants. SpongeBob asked Mr. Krabs to practice his lines one more time. Oh, the joyous life of a fry cook, sang Mr. Krabs. That was great, Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob told him. Now we're ready to roll the camera. Action! When the camera started rolling, Mr. Krabs started sweating. Oh, the, the life of a fry cook, he said nervously. You can do it, Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob whispered encouragingly. Remember, you're the crab father, SpongeBob added. But Mr. Krabs became more and more nervous with every passing second. Cut! SpongeBob finally shouted. Once the camera stopped, Mr. Krabs instantly felt better. I'd say that went pretty well, eh, SpongeBob? he asked. So that was the first half of the book. Um, obviously, Mr. Krabs is not doing a great job of um, being the star in this movie. So that's our conflict that we are seeing right now. And hopefully by the end of the story, the conflict will be resolved and it'll be fixed. So like I said, as I'm reading, I hope you heard some more examples of all these different parts of speech. And on Monday, I will have a more full list of all of the adjectives, adverbs, verbs, and nouns that I came across in those first four chapters. Um, thank you for watching. I loved seeing so many of you yesterday on Zoom. It was so great to see all of your faces. Hopefully I can see some of you again today at one o'clock. Um, I can't wait to see all of you. Love you, miss you, and I will see you all soon. Welcome back for our math problem of the day. Uh, this one is about two friends, Tom and Sarah, who are collecting um, cans of food for a food drive. And it says that Tom collected 205 cans of food and he collected 78 more cans than Sarah. And the question is, how many cans did Sarah collect? So what I did was on my board, I understand that there are two characters in this story. There's two people that we need to have information about, Tom and Sarah. Now I'm going to write down everything I know about how many cans these people collected. So I know for sure that Tom collected 205 cans of soda. Soda. Cans of food. <laughs> Sarah, on the other hand, we don't know how many she collected. We know that she collected 78 less cans than Tom, but we don't know the exact number. It says that Tom collected 78 more cans than Sarah. Well, if Tom has more, then that means Sarah has to have 78 less cans than Tom. So in order to find out how many cans Sarah collected, we need to figure out a number that is 78 less than 205. Now I know when I'm looking for a number that's less, the operation I'm going to use is subtraction. So I'm going to do the total 205 minus 78. And I'm going to make sure that I line up my ones and tens places because it's really easy to get tricked by putting them in the wrong spot. And then that'll just confuse you. So first we're going to do five minus eight. We can't do that because eight is larger than the five. So we have to come over here and borrow from the tens place. But there's a problem. We don't have any tens, we have a zero, so there's nothing to borrow from. So what we have to do is come over here to our hundreds place and borrow a hundred. If we had two hundreds, but we borrow one of them, now we have one, and one hundred is the same as 10 tens. So we borrowed that hundred and gave the tens place 10 tens. But now the whole reason we did that was so that we could get some more ones. So now we have to borrow one of those tens and give it to the ones place. 
So now we have 15 minus 8, which we can do. 15 minus 8 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 1 minus nothing is 1. So according to our math right now, Sarah has collected 127 cans. Now to make sure that this answer is correct, I can check my work. I can do the inverse operation of subtraction, which is addition. I can add these two numbers together, and the sum should be the total that we started with, 205. So if I come over here and do 127 plus 78, 7 plus 8 is 15, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 7 is 10, 1 plus 1 is 2. 205 and 205. So I checked my work and our answer is correct. Sarah collected 127 cans. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you again for stopping in, watching these videos. I hope it creates a little bit of a normalcy for you so you don't feel like you're totally out of the classroom, totally out of school right now. I miss all of you like crazy and I'm really hoping that I can see more of you on our Zoom meeting today. So thanks again. I miss you all and I will be seeing you soon, I promise.